The past was a weird time. People were stabbing dead people because they were suspected vampires. This has no relation to what I'm doing. Instead, I'm gonna take a look at the history that AMSCO left out. Ah uh, yes, AMSCO, the most reliable source with fake text in PDFs. No point installing any further because I'm sure everyone's tired by now and wants to go home. Let's take a journey through the knowledge forest or whatever. Oh boy it's John Wycliffe. Born in 1328. He really didn't like the church. He wanted the Bible to be translated from Latin to not Latin. Okay so. He was born in Yorkshire. And went to a college and produced a small treatise. Called The Last Age of the Church. Like several others. He thought the plague meant the end of the world. Unlike several others, who believed that the plague was God's judgment on sinful people, Wycliffe believed it was an indictment of unworthy clergy. After he died, he was declared a heretic and his dead body was burned and thrown into the river. Wycliffe is considered an important predecessor to Protestantism. Now time for another John. John Harrison, born in 1693, invented the chronometer. This stopwatch-looking thing. This helps you calculate your longitude out in the ocean. Harrison was a dedicated timekeeper, making very accurate clocks especially for the 1710s. Longitude problem. So. Sailors had a bit of a problem. There wasn't a good way to determine your exact location. To determine your location, you needed latitude and longitude. There were always ways to determine your latitude by looking at the sun and doing math. For centuries, the best way to determine longitude was by estimating your speed which isn't very accurate because ocean currents don't tend to be exactly the same. This lead to shipwrecks which is decidedly not good. Another way to determine your longitude was by stabbing a dog and putting that dog on a ship and then on land taking a bandage with the dog's blood and putting it in sympathy powder at noon and. Then the dog on the ship would yelp in pain and tell the crew that it was noon. Surprisingly, this didn't work. Instead, John Harrison came around and invented the chronometer. It keeps a very accurate time which you can use to determine the longitude. The chronometer has undoubtedly lead to a lot less shipwrecks and less deaths. Welcome, I'm your host Mr. Expletive, and on my show, Interviews with Increasingly Obscure and Uninteresting People, you can watch many interesting interviews with uninteresting people like this. Hello, and you are? Generic Sailor 3 from the 1710s. Hello Generic Sailor 3, why are you here? Padding out the runtime. At least you're honest. So I once knew a guy. Most of us have. He was on a ship commanded by Admiral of the Fleet Sir Cloud Esley Shovel. He tried to warn Admiral of the Fleet Sir Cloud Esley Shovel that the ship was dangerously close to some islands off the coast of Portugal. He was then hanged for subversive navigation by an inferior. Then, the ships crashed into the islands and Admiral of the Fleet Sir Cloud Esley Shovel and 1,400 others died. If only he had a chronometer. Is that a true story? Probably not but it still shows that the longitude is important to know. Seven Years War, The War About Ohio so France and not France otherwise known as Britain and also like most of Europe were having a kerfuffle about North America. France, Spain, and Britain were in North America doing all sorts of stuff but. Britain wanted all of America so they fight the Seven Years' War. This war happened pretty much everywhere except Antarctica. Six years, eight months, four weeks, and one day later, the Seven Years' War is over. France cedes a bunch of land east of the Mississippi to Britain and land west of the Mississippi to Spain. Spain ceded Florida to Britain. Britain is now broke and needs money. Britain taxes the colonies to make money. One revolution later and the United States exists. France also happened to help with the American Revolution which made them broke and then the French Revolution. So the Seven Years' War lead to the American Revolution and the French Revolution. Neat. I love Wikipedia. It's one of my favorite things to browse, 
especially on the school laptop where I can't see any images because the school doesn't understand the concept of graphics. Oh boy it's the list of nuclear and radiation accidents and incidents. That's not at all terrifying. So. In 1961 there was a B-52 flying near Goldsboro, North Carolina. This plane then just broke up in air somehow. The funny thing about this plane is that it was carrying two Mark 39 nuclear bombs when this happened. I'm not sure why this plane was carrying nuclear bombs above North Carolina but that's besides the point. So now you have two nuclear bombs falling towards the earth. Luckily neither bomb exploded. One landed in a field and the other landed in a tree. Look at that. That is terrifying. The one in the field is still partially there. Information declassified in 2013 reveals that the one in the tree was only one safety device away from exploding. If either bomb had exploded, it would have the destructive power of 250 times the Hiroshima bomb and everyone within 8.5 miles would have been certainly dead. Well that's horrifying. Don't worry it gets worse. Around midnight September 26, 1983, Stanislav Petrov was in a bunker near Moscow. The early missile warning system was going off, and said there was a missile coming. Petrov was skeptical however and decided to break protocol and not do anything about it. Petrov was correct and there were no missiles coming towards them. If the he had decided to fire back, Hundreds of thousands if not millions would be killed. Both these incidents narrowly avoided the death of thousands and yet no one knows about them.